The Patriots have been on a very impressive seven game winning streak and they've been the same pale Patriots we've seen have so much success all these years. A steady run game, a wildly accurate quarterback, low penalties and mistakes, and a lockdown defense and key pickups in free agency. Well, nothing describes the last things I mentioned better than Matthew Judon, who is having a career year with the Patriots. Currently third in the Defensive Player of the Year race, he has 12 and a half sacks, which is third in the league. He leads the league in quarterback pressures with 43, and once we get into the film, we're going to see how these numbers don't even do justice the impact he has on the game. The Patriots have made a lot of great additions this offseason, but to me, this is the most impactful one by far, especially on the defensive end. So we're gonna hop into a film analysis, see what makes him so good and why he's having a breakout year with the Patriots, and then also see why the Patriots didn't overpay for him, or at least at the top of the range, and that was the huge narrative going into the season. So let's get into the film. One of my favorite things about this film analysis is I'm not going to have to point out where Matthew Judon is on every play because he's going to be the one in the long red sleeve. So this is going to be the only time he's going to play right end and left end, but he's going to be wearing this in every single game. So just look out for this. But on this play, we are going to see how we can completely change your offensive scheme. Bruce Arians and Tom Brady have a very, very good and creative offense. And on this play, it's going to be play action, which is a staple of any Tom Brady offense. They're going to sell this run really hard right here with Ronald Jones, and they're going to do this by pulling the guard which is going to completely freeze the linebackers because that's not common on a passing play but the idea is that the guard is going to come all the way over here and he's going to block Judon and after Ronald Jones gets the fake handoff he's going to come out and help chip on him and then release out into the flats for Brady's check down. So once this play gets started, you can see how fast Matthew Judon is going. He has a very, very, very first quick step. But you can see right now how fast the linebackers are getting sucked into this run play. They see the pulling guard. They're reading run really quick. And as soon as Brady, they literally have to drop back. He's turning around and sprinting back into his zone, not even looking at it. This is exactly what the Buccaneers wanted. But if you look over to Matthew Judon already, he is already on the lineman's upfield shoulder. Ronald Jones is not big enough, not strong enough, maybe fast enough, but always the first two things kind of outpower that and he's going to get on Brady before he can do anything one not allowing Ronald Jones to get out in the flats to be his check down so there is nothing open for Brady there's nothing he can do with the ball right now and as you see this play this guard is just not going to be able this is the, them getting too cute this is how we completely change your schemes because they were probably playing this in practice having so much success with it but when you have a guy like Matthew Judon who's just athletically superior and so good at getting after the quarterback you just can't get too cute with him and that's going to completely change your offensive game plan. And this is going to be another quick example of that. You're going to see Judon on the right with the long red sleeves again. But this is a staple of almost every single NFL offense. And you're going to see this a lot. Sean Payton loves this play. It's going to be a play action, naked boot out to the right. And you see them complete this to Taysom Hill, a backside tight end, over and over and over again, whether it's a fullback or anything. This play works out so well, especially when you have a solid run game. And the Saints are going to completely sell it on the run to the left here. But Matthew Judon sees this, knows he's not probably not going to be able to make this backside side run so he's gonna play this very very smart and as soon as he sees this takes one step and he's gonna attack Jameis Winston's upfield shoulder not gonna allow him to do anything Jalen Jameis Winston tries this majestic pump fake right here but it's just not gonna be enough because Matthew Judon can come at a bullet speed but also come in really controlled and the angle he took is so good Jameis Winston has no shot of getting this to Taysom Hill is where he wants to go with the ball so on this play very, very common in the NFL. You're going to see this a lot, but he just completely disrupts even the most common plays that they have so much success with any other week when you're not going against a guy like Matthew Judon. And what Matthew Judon and elite pass rushers have in the NFL is they have multiple moves that they can have. He's not just going to be a speed rusher because he tries to do that on this play, but very quickly sees the tackle, breaks him to the outside spot. So he's going to go in. And why this Patriots defense is so effective is because they have great coverage on the back end. Matthew Judon in the front being an elite pass rusher. This goes in tandem so well with each other because it gives him more time to get after the quarterback. But the relentless pursuit of the football is what I love about Matthew Judon. So right now, he doesn't know if he's going to be able to make it to the outside. He sees this wide open hole right here on the inside, so he's going to go after, attack it. Davis Mills properly escapes the pocket to the right, but Matthew Judon, it looks like he hates Davis Mills. It's like he took his lunch money. He wants this ball so bad, and so he's going to pursue him. The coverage on the back end is amazing. Matthew Judon is going to make this sack, and for the first time, we're going to see it multiple times, but he's going to do his signature sack celebration. Oh, I don't... 
I would be lying to you. I'm gonna say I understand it. I don't. Maybe he's just smelling his wrist like, oh, that shit is stanky. I have no idea what he's doing, but I really love it. I'm gonna respect it. And as a defensive coordinator, if you don't like it, he's gonna give you 15 of these a year, so you are gonna have no complaints in this. But Matthew Judon setting up an elite pass rushing skill, relentless pursuit after the quarterback, and getting another sack. So I just threw this one in there because this is funny. Matthew Judon is busy right now. He's pumping up the crowd because this is a big down. This is going to be his third sack of the game, and it's getting a little bit too easy. So we're going to throw it all the way back to middle school and give Jameis Winston a three-apple rush. So they're going to snap the ball. He's going to one apple, two apple, three apple, and now he's going to go after Jameis Winston. He's going to beat the tackle around the outside with ease and get his third sack of the game. And sorry, I don't have the all 22 film on this, but Matthew Judon still pretty easy to spot out. This is why I would never, ever, ever want to do an Oklahoma drill against Matthew Judon. This is going to be his impact on the run game. I know we could go in a lot more because he does a really good job getting after the passer. Sometimes he can get out of position because of how effective he is. And when he's getting up field, they can run underneath him. But when he's holding his own, he can hold and manhandle alignment at the line of scrimmage. So look at how he plays this absolutely perfectly. So right now he locks in and he's ready to either release when he sees the running back commit and this is the best Oklahoma drill I've ever seen because you're just kind of waiting to see which side the running back's gonna go so it looks like he's going on the inside so he's like all right I'm released he gets a free arm to make the tackle the running back sees this and so he's like all right I'm gonna go to the outside Matthew Judon switches gets to the outside and then he goes back into the inside so he gets on the inside Running back goes to the outside, sees Matthew Judon going to the outside, goes back to the inside, and is still able to get back onto the inside to stuff this run for zero gain. So if we see this in full speed, he's just able to manhandle right, left, right, make it. The running back has nothing to do, and this is what Matthew Judon's impact can be on the run game when he's playing the line of scrimmage. This is going to be the last sack we're going to look at for the day but before we start looking at some other things. But again, Case Keenum is in the game because he had a monster game against the Browns. He was after Baker Mayfield all game, eventually leading to a hit that got him out of the game. But again, they're going to try and do as much as they can to give Case Keenum enough time to throw the ball. So Njoku is going to chip him before he goes off on his route, which pushes Matthew Judon way up the field. And once Case Keenum is going to start to detect this pressure, he has all this space to step up, either run the ball, roll out, or just buy more time, which is the right play to do, and he's absolutely right. That's what he should do. But Matthew Judon, even when everything is right, even when they double-team him, and I just want to throw out a really cool stat. I think Nick Bosa and Miles Garrett get double-teamed less than Matthew Judon does, and he has a better win rate percentage off the line getting after the quarterback. But he's going to step up, but he's also going to win this matchup, have these rubber ankles to just plan his feet and step up and close down what seemingly looked like a wide open the best Moses splitting the Red Sea impression from the offensive line and he completely just takes that away with being able to turn the corner and get after him getting another sack getting his career high tied for nine and a half in 10 weeks so what's the best way to combat Matthew Judon? It's get rid of the ball quick, and that's exactly what the Buccaneers ended up having to do when he was having so much success getting after Brady. So yes, just get rid of it quick. He's going to get around the edge, and maybe if he had a longer developing route, Matthew Judon can win this matchup and get it out. But he's going to get it to Leonard Fournette. But look at right here. Look how far out of the play he is. Football is a game of inches. Everyone knows that. Matthew Judon's relentless pursuit of the football saves yards and yards and yards. So when you're saving yards in a game, of inches and relentless pursuit of the football he look he tackles Leonard Fournette he was like five yards in the backfield when he caught the ball so we're gonna see this again they're gonna get the ball out quick Matthew Judon is completely turned around already while Leonard Fournette has the ball and he tracks him all the way down he doesn't have to do it. he's like look at all these other players on they're just kind of jogging after the play Matthew Judon is in a dead sprint after the ball and he ends up making the play. Who knows how much further this could have gone as he was able to get to the sideline. That could have even been a touchdown on this play. Matthew Judon makes these plays by being relentless. Like Leonard Fournette stole his lunch money, he wants it back. So as we can see, Matthew Judon's impact on the field is not measurable by stats alone, and he is in a position that can impact the game in the highest way possible. You have to change your play calling, your blocking schemes, and he's going to create momentum changing and game breaking plays from the defensive side of the ball. This was by far one of Bill Belichick's best pickups he's had in free agency, and he's a huge reason why they've won so many games and will continue to win games. 
But let me know what you think. At first, I thought it was kind of like biased because you, I mean, he just sticks out on the field. You see him in the red sleeves. Your eyes just gravitate towards him when he's out there on the field. But then I started to realize, no, it's just because he's really good and he's always around the ball, whether it's in the passing game, the run game, whether he's just doing his job. He's been made so, so many plays this year and the stats alone just can't do justice with his impact on the field. But let me know what you think about Matthew Judon. Make sure to like this video if you like videos like these. Make sure to comment down below what you think of Matthew Judon or the Patriots odds of making a playoff run or even making the Super Bowl. Are we going to see a Patriots Bucks Super Bowl? I don't know. The power ranking says it's kind of likely, but we'll see. And make sure to subscribe if you enjoy daily sports content. Thank you guys so much for checking out the channel. I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, I will see you tomorrow. Peace.